So in this video, I want to look at the keyword analysis tool of AntConc. So let's look at that now. So first we need to, of course, start the software. So we need to double click on the AntConc icon, and then you'll see something that looks like this. And as I've explained in other tutorial videos, when AntConc stars, it doesn't have any data showing. So you need to load in a corpus before you can do any analysis. So let's load in a corpus through the file open corpus manager option. And here you need to choose a corpus that you want to work with. And as, a, as I've explained before, you can use one of the pre-built corpora or you can load in one of your own set of data. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the AMIO 6 uh, 1 million word general English corpus. And here I'm going to look at the learned subcorpus, which is um, a subcorpus of academic English. So if I double click on that subcorpus and click OK, then we can get started. Uh, so now we have the data loaded, and here you can see 80 files and 161,560 tokens. Uh, we can do an analysis of keywords. Now, in a previous video, I explained how to use the word list tool, and that was a tool that showed you all the words in the corpus, as you can see here. Sometimes you might want to compare all the words in this corpus with all the words in another corpus and try to identify words which appear unusually frequently in this corpus compared to the other one. One of the cases where this often happens is when we want to compare some specialized corpus with a generalized corpus, but we can think of other cases as well. So this is where the keyword tool can be very useful. So if I click on the keyword tool and click start, the um, software is going to give you a warning and it's going to say there's no reference corpus has been loaded. So for this tool to work, we need to give the tool two corpora. We've already loaded a target corpus, which I've just explained was the AMIO6 academic subcorpus, but we need to compare it with something. So how do we do that? Well, we just go back to the own to the corpus manager from the file menu and choose another corpus. So I'm going to go to file, open corpus manager. And here, let me again show you this interface. And you'll notice that we have here the target corpus, but next to that, we also have another option for a reference corpus. Now, if I click on reference corpus, of course, nothing has, has been selected yet, but we can still choose from all the pre-built corpora, or we can choose a user custom corpus, or we can load in some raw files and load in a different corpus for comparison with the target corpus. So what can we use to compare our academic English against? Well, one option is to compare it against the full AMIO6 general English corpus. And I'll do that by just double clicking on the AMIO6 corpus here. And we can see here we have 500 texts and about a million words of general English. Uh, you'll, and then I'll, I'll click here, okay. But remember, you can load in your own files or use a pre-built custom corpus. So if I click okay now, you'll see on the left, we have a new uh, pane open. And we can see here now we have the target corpus and we also have a reference corpus. So we can now compare the two together. So in the keyword list tool, I can now click start and we won't get a, an error anymore. And instead we will get the keywords from the, uh, in this target corpus. So here are the results. So we have here the, um, the type, the, and then we have the rank of the keyword. And then we have the frequency in the target corpus and the frequency in the reference corpus. We also have the range or the number of files that it appears in the target corpus against the reference corpus. Then we have these two measures of statistics. The likelihood measure is the, um, the statistically, uh, the, a measure of statistical significance. So uh, any word in this list 
is statistically significantly unusual in the target corpus compared with the reference corpus. The effect size measure is looking at how unusual it is and um, the degree of unusualness. And the more unusual it is, the higher the effect would be. Uh, so that's, that's what the results are showing here. At the bottom, we have some options for searching within the keyword list with words. We can do case sensitive searching if we want, or regex searching if you know what regular expressions are. Uh, and I, we can also sort in different ways. You'll notice that the default sort is by keyness, which is in this case, the likelihood measure here. Okay, so keyness is the likelihood measure. We can also sort by the effect size measure. And if we sort by the effect size, of course, the, the ranks of the words change, as you can see here. Um, I would probably recommend to use the keyness measure for your ranking, at least initially. So we can see that of is the, the most uh, statistically significantly unusually frequent word in the target corpus compared with the reference corpus. And then we have the word X for some unusual reason, and then is and learning and so on. Now you might look at these results and think, well, these are not very academic in their, um, considering what academic writing is normally like compared with general English. So it shows that this statistic, this keyness measure is perhaps not measuring um, the, the keyness that we can intuitively feel about these two different corpora. So that suggests that we might want to try a different statistical measure. And there are some options for that in the settings. So if I go to the settings uh, and go to the tool settings, uh, I can now go to the keyword settings and see the settings that we have here. OK, so what probability measure do we have here for the likelihood? And the default is log likelihood to term, OK? which is a default setting here. But we can also use log likelihood for term. I won't go into details of how they are different. And there's also some measure called text dispersion. And let me show you um, how that performs here. So text dispersion looks at not the frequency of words in the target corpus versus the reference corpus, but the number of files it appears in in the two different corpora. If it appears in an unusually frequent number of files in the reference target corpus compared with the reference corpus, then it will have a high keyness value. We can, of course, set the p-value threshold for this measure. The default here is 3.84, p-value of 0.05, but we can change that to, say, um, add a Bonferroni correction there. And uh, we can also change the effect size measure. The default here is DIS, but we can change that to mutual information or MI2 or 3 and T-score, Z-score and so on. I'll leave it as it is. And we also have some threshold values here. And I'm at the moment showing all values. If I apply this, so now we've changed the statistical measure of keyness. And if I now run the analysis again, you might see something quite interesting. So now the keywords seem to be more reflecting our intuitive understanding of what would be unusually frequent in an academic corpus. So the most key word now is however, and then thus, study, particular, studies, we have this word G, such, example, and so on. So this seems to be performing a little better for this set of data. And the text dispersion uh, measured is quite good at picking out keywords when the files are similar sizes and the, the corpora have lots of files in them. So that's how the keyword tool works of Anconc. And with, as with other tools, if we click on one of these keywords, then the software will jump to the quick concordancer and show the word in context. Notice now that it isn't case, it isn't uh, being converted to lowercase, we get the original hit here. So we can go through all the examples of however in the corpus. 
And of course, we can also then click on one of these examples and jump to the regional file where that word appeared and see it in context. And also, as with other tools, if you want to save the results, then um, we can change the page size to show all the hits. And then we, um, you, you can click on the corner to select everything here, or you could select individual rows as we've done in other examples like this. Copy those, and then you could paste those into Excel like this. Again, you'll notice there's some gaps here in the, in the rows, and these gaps are because they're gaps in the original list. Uh, if you select everything and copy that and paste it into Excel, of course, now the gaps will disappear and you'll get the full set of results. And you can, um, another option is to use the File menu option and save the current tab results. And if we do that, then we can go to our folder and we can save these keyword results like this. And then if I go to the folder uh, and look at keyword results, again, we see a plain text file with all the results saved. And these can be copied and pasted into Excel or used with another tool. So uh, let's close these files. So that's how to use the keyword analysis tool of Anconc. It's, using the keyword tool has a few more steps than some of the other tools that you'll use in the Anconc toolkit, but it is a very powerful tool and will, can reveal many interesting features about your corpus. So give it a try. Mm -hmm.